So Aryan, the law of conservation of energy says this, the amount of potential energy that you start with and the amount of kinetic energy that you start with has to equal, let's be consistent, Mr. Duick, since you wrote potential first, write potential next. The amount of potential energy you finish with plus the amount of kinetic energy you finish with, uh, plus heat if there is any. Now, kinetic energy is a half mv squared. Potential energy, Eliana, that just means stored energy. Usually it's mgh, but not always. And a good example is a slingshot or a bow and arrow. Uh, a slingshot is pulled with an average force of 70 newtons for a distance of 90 centimeters. First thing I would probably do is change that to 0 0.9 meters. Nice try, Mr. Duick. Eliana, what's A asking me to find? How much what? Yeah, and so don't write this down. A lot of students go like this right away. And they say, oh, I, need a, I, 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 I need a mass. And then they go, oh, he gave me a mass in part B. They'll steal the mass from part B. And then they'll say, well, uh, H is in meters. That must be a height. But look at the picture. Is that a change in height? No. MGH is the energy that you store when lifting an object. This is not being lifted. I think here the potential energy is just going to be the work. It's going to be the force times the distance. Are the force and the distance in the same direction? Yeah. So it's just going to be the force, which was 70 times 0.9, which I think is 63 newtons, but someone double-checked me. I think that's right. Yeah. So when you pull on a slingshot, I may have told you I grew up with slingshots. We used to have a cabin near 100 Mile House, and so every summer we would go there for a few weeks, and the first day my dad would walk, I have two brothers, so he would walk his three boys into the woods, and he would carve us slingshots the first day. They would dry out in front of the fire overnight, and then the next day he would put the rubber on, build the slingshot, and then we would spend the next two weeks happily shooting rocks at trees and all sorts of other things, hopefully not windows or anything like that, but it was lots of fun. So slingshots are a big part of my life, but they're also a great conservation of energy example. You store energy by doing work equals force times distance. And then when you let go, Fahim, what does that energy turn into? What type? Yeah, so if it says if there is a 35 gram, nice try, Mr. Duick, 0 0.035 kilograms mass in the pouch, how fast will it leave the slingshot? I could do a full conservation of energy, but I think what we can just say here, Brandon, is that 63 joules, that turns into kinetic. If, if you're wanting a more formalized version, if you wanted me to do this with conservation of energy, if you want to write this down, you can, but you don't have to. We can just walk through this as an intellectual exercise. What we were really saying is, uh, final, Mr. Duick. What we were really saying, Brandon, is, well, before you let go, it's not moving. And after you let go, the slingshot no longer has any stored energy. Or you could just say it's going to turn into that. And then you could argue uh, 63 is going to be mv squared over 2 or a half mv squared. I wrote it that way because I figured I was going to be getting the v by itself. I think it's going to be times by 2 divided by the mass square root. V is going to be 2 times 63 divided by 0 0.035 square root of that, which is what? Hopefully my numbers are reasonable. I was making up numbers. Good to see some of you finally getting out your calculators. Uh, 2 times 63 divided by 0 0.035. This might work out evenly. Be nice. Yeah, 60? That seems ballpark about right, 60 meters per second. Fast, but not crazy, crazy, crazy fast. 
Um, being very technical, remember, don't write this down, just look up, work not only equals force times distance, it was force times distance cos theta. That was the best definition of work. And when theta was 90 degrees, the cosine of 90 was zero. So I wrote here a technical comment on ramps. The normal force, which is always at right angles to the ramp, does no work because it's perpendicular to the ramp. So if you were trying to figure out how much work the normal force did, that would be times 90. So if the ramp is frictionless, the energy of the system is actually totally conserved. So that's why we can use this to analyze roller coasters. We grease them down, Joanna, as much as possible, but we don't have to worry about the normal force because the normal force, no matter how the track is curving, will always be at right angles to that little section of track. And so theta at that little section will always be 90 degrees. By the way, who's in calculus? It's the normal force. It's technically a tangent line to the curve, which you're starting to do a little bit in calculus as well. That's why it's always at 90 degrees. Also, for a rope, you can make a, the same argument for tension. So, if you have a rope, don't write this down, just watch. When it's swinging, if that's the rope, let's say right there, tension is always at right angles to the arc of the rope, which means a rope is also a pretty good example of conservation of energy. G, G. So let's try this. Tarzan weighs 82 kilograms and can run at 8 meters per second. He runs along the ground and grabs a vine swinging into the air. What maximum height does he reach? We're going to dulp. So here's Tarzan running. Let's, let's see, Mr. Duke. How do I draw a running person, Mr. Duick? Let's do better than that. Tarzan. Running. Let's see. Let's go. The knee would bend. There's one foot. The knee would bend. There's another foot there. There he's running really fast. That's about as good as I can draw. He's going to grab a rope. So here's the rope. He's going to run, 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 grab it and swing into the air. Okay. There's my stick figure art. It's as good as it gets. Kyle, what's this question want me to find? Hmm. Is there a change in height? Is there a change in speed? Is there also a yucky, curvy path? Yeah, I think our best bet is conservation of energy. Most ropes don't have much friction. In fact, the re on a rope swing, you can swing back and forth for a while. You're losing most of your energy to air molecules, to air resistance that you're bumping into. Uh, are any of these zero, Kyle? I think at the top of the swing, how fast will he be traveling for a split second? Yeah, this is really similar to the skate park ramp as well. Okay. Um, can I say potential energy initial is zero? Is he starting out on the ground? Well, we have a bit of a problem here. Technically, the ground is there, but one of the nice things about conservation of energy is we can put zero height wherever we want. So I'm going to let H equals zero right there. I'm going to do that, and this will tell me how much higher he swings. I'm going to get a half m v initial squared, and this is gravitational potential energy because there is a change in height. Kenta, what do you notice about the M's? What does that mean? It means not only if tar is Tarzan going to swing to this height, but if Tantor the elephant was running at 8 meters per second and grabbed the rope and the rope didn't snap, he would swing to the same height as well. Cal, get the H by itself. Yeah, the final height, it looks like it's going to be vi squared. I'm going to write it like this over 
2G. I'm not going to bother writing the one of the one half because that looks a little cleaner. Uh, what if Tarzan ran twice as fast? How much higher would he go? Four times higher. Okay. Anyways, it's going to be 8 squared divided by 2 times 9.8. And I get 3.27, if I round off properly. Yeah. I know on the ultimate review, there's a couple of rope swing questions. There's one that's particularly challenging, but cool. I wrote here, slap shots are great examples of energy transformations, and there's a video. I showed this to you in Physics 11. We watched a Smarter Every Day video where we noticed in a slap shot, they actually strike the ice behind the puck before they hit the puck, and it causes the stick to flex, and the stick gains enough energy that if you look closely, the blade, the blade travels faster than the handle. You get more kinetic energy connecting. I'll show you a different video a bit later. But let's get to roller coasters, example three. Roller coaster below has a mass of 255 kilograms. If it just barely makes it over the first hill at location A, how fast will it be go going at location B? So I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to let initial be right here and final be right here. And I'm pretty sure, Hannah, I'm seeing a change in height and a change in speed and a yucky curvy path. This is gonna be conservation of energy. It's gonna be initial plus initial equals final plus final. And it says ignore friction, so no heat. Hannah, are any of these zeros? I've unfortunately scrolled down, so I can't remember. Are we starting out at rest? No? So one of those, good news is one of those answers is correct. What does it say in part A in brackets? Okay. Are we ending at rest? No. Uh, are we ever ending on the ground? Where? Initial or final? Okay. And so we get a pretty simplified version. We get MGH initial equals a half MV final squared. Hannah, are you a roller coaster fan? Kind of. Have you been on a roller coaster before? Before you got on the roller coaster, did they make you step on a scale? Why not? If we ignore friction in our magic physics world, the M's do cancel. In real life, if we make friction as small as possible, we're still good. Uh, are they asking me to find the initial height or the final speed? Are they asking me to find the initial height or the final speed? Let's get the V by itself. I think it's just going to be times by 2. I'm going to get VF equals 2GH initial and uh, square root. 2 times 9.8. Was the initial height 18, Hannah? I'm going from memory, I think. Okay. Oh, this might work out evenly. I'm not sure. I take that back. I don't think it will. 18.8? How many kilometers per hour is that? Could you multiply that by 3.6? Okay, that's a okay coaster. I've been on better. I'll stand in line for like half an hour maybe, but I'm not standing in line for three hours for this one. Let's kick this coaster up a notch. Jay, let's suppose the coaster had an initial speed of 22 meters per second at location A. So we're going to start out the same with conservation of energy. Initial plus initial equals final plus final. 
But I think this time the only thing that cancels is potential energy final. We're going to get a half mv initial squared plus mgh initial equals a half mv final squared. Jay, have you been on a roller coaster before? Before you got on a coaster, did it make you step on a scale? Can little kids and grown-ups go on this ride together? How come? Well, that's kind of cool. What are we trying to find? I think VF, I, again, I have no problem if you just divide by 0.5 square root. I usually tend to go times by two, times the middle term by two as well, times by two, because the one halves cancel. And I know I'm gonna get VF squared equals VI squared plus 2AD in disguise. And that's kind of a built-in error check. I'm going to put the VF squared over here on the left where we're used to seeing it. And now I'm going to square root. It's going to be 22 squared plus 2 times 9.8 times 18. Okay. Now how fast are we going at the bottom of the first hill? Eric, what'd you get? 28 point, 28.9? Is that right? Anybody else? Could you multiply that by 3.6? How many kilometers per hour? Okay. That's one I'll, I'll line up for. That's good. I've been faster, but not by a whole bunch. So if you are ever standing in line at a roller coaster, most coasters that use a chain to pull up the first car, the car comes over that top hill still pretty slowly. And so although VI isn't quite zero, Taya, it's close enough. Again, if you make an estimate as to the height, and usually I make an et, because most roller coasters are made up of like truss systems, I make an estimate of how high one truss is, and I just count how many there are and multiply. You can get a pretty good idea of how fast you'd be going. And again, I think that adds to the ride. Suppose the roller coaster in part B is only traveling at 25 meters per second at the bottom. How much energy was lost to heat? Okay. We're going to still start out with conservation of energy. G, G. But this time, we're going to include heat. Which ones of these are zeros? Ruby, I think I can still say potential energy final is zero, but we're doing from part B, so kinetic initial isn't zero this time. We want to get the heat by itself. Ruby, how would I get the heat by itself? Yeah. Heat is going to be a half mv initial squared plus mgh initial minus a half m. V final squared. Subtract the kinetic energy over. Ruby, have you been on a roller coaster before? Did they make you step on a scale? Technically, the M's don't cancel if we include heat, but if we can reduce friction enough by greasing it down so that there's not much heat generated and sound and other dissipative energies, we're still pretty good. But yeah, I fibbed a bit. Technically, the masses don't cancel. So, uh, there's no mass in heat. It's going to be, uh, plug in the numbers, heat is going to be 0. 0.5 times, what was the mass of the coaster? I hope I gave it to you. 255? Two, and the initial velocity, was it 22? In B? Yeah. Nope, too far. Squared plus 250 times 9.8 times, I think the initial height was 18, minus 0. 0.5 times 250 times 25 squared, as opposed to 28.9. 
Another good example of conservation of energy is water slides. Technically, at the bottom of a water slide, Ashley, you should be traveling the same speed as if you jumped off of the slide and free fell to the ground. Now, how many of you have been on a water slide before? Probably most of you. Are you going that fast at the bottom? Where do you lose most of your energy on the water slide? You're pushing water. You're giving a lot of the water kinetic energy with your body. You get 27,700, 26, 27, 685, is that right? No, am I wrong? Okay, that's what I was asking. Uh, 255, Mr. Duick, you suddenly went to 250s. Don't know why I did that, that should be a five. That should be a five. Do you get uh, 27,000 and a little bit? I'm gonna go to 27,000, is that right? Okay. A cart and rider start from rest. Hey, let's underline from rest on a high ramp. At the bottom, the car is traveling at 15 meters per second. How much energy was lost to heat? Hmm. Okay. Huh. Ella, any thoughts on how I'm going to start this? How do you know? Well, there's a change in height. There is a change in speed. Is there a yucky, curvy path? No. Did they mention heat? Okay. So what's it going to look like? Initial plus initial equals final plus final plus heat. Ella, are any of these zeros? That's a bonus. That's a bonus. So this one's not too bad. How would I get the heat by itself? Yeah, heat is going to end up being MGH initial minus a half MV final squared. Did the M's cancel here? No. It is going to be, what was the mass? I've scrolled down, 75 times 9.8 times the initial height was 20 minus 0.5 times 75 times 15. Don't forget the squared, Mr. Duick. You get 62.5. Okay, I'm going to write 6260, but I'm going to store this on my calculator because it's a part B, 6260 joules. Ooh. Taya, what's part B asking me to find? First thing I would write, don't write this down, first thing I would go to is friction equals mu times the normal force. I would obviously start there. Why doesn't that help me at all? I could deal with that. Even more obvious. Don't go back. You don't need to go back a page. Why doesn't that help me at all? What else is in the equation for friction besides the normal force? Did they give me a coefficient of friction anywhere in the question? So why doesn't that help me at all? No mu. Okay. Uh, by the way, they didn't say find the force of friction. They put a word in front of it, find the average. That usually means I'm hinting it's going to be a slightly more complex procedure. Well, what if we find in part A? What's another way to think about heat? The work done by what? And this you might want to add to your blue sheet, but you can't add it to your yellow sheet. Another way to think about heat, it's the work done by, yeah, heat Another way to think about it, come on pencil, is the work 
done by friction. And Taya, work is what times what? Which force? Friction. I, I would start out by saying heat equals friction force times distance. How would I get friction force by itself? Friction is going to be 62, 62.5. Ooh, which distance am I going to use the 20 or the 60? Why the 60? Because the force and the distance have to be in the same direction if you're using force times distance. So it's going to be divided by the 60. There's the average force of friction, 104 newtons. Uh, by the way, don't write this down, but if I wanted to as a challenging follow-up or maybe as the nasty multiple choice, instead of asking for the average force of friction, I could give you this question, not even ask heat, and just say, find mu. How could you do that? Well, were we able to find friction? Friction is what times what? Okay, so mu is going to be friction divided by mg perpendicular, the normal force. Cos, theta. Do I know theta? Could I figure it out? Color, color, color. Opposite. You know what? It's going to be shift sign of 20 over 60. Now I could get theta. That was an old scholarship question. I don't know if I'm going to ask you that one on this work energy test, but if you're looking for like, how can I take it one step further? That might be a way that I could bring it one step further if I really wanted to kick it up a notch. I'll erase that though, because that really wrecks your dot, your question. So we could find mute. But you can't find mu without finding friction first. In other words, you couldn't answer part B by somehow going friction equals mu times the normal force. I'll find mu and then I'll find friction. You would need friction to find mu. Uh, Rube Goldberg machines are great examples of energy transformations. A Rube Goldberg machine or a chain reaction machine is, well, something like this. Put your pencils down, look up. Uh, bouncing ball is a great example of conservation of energy gg i talked about this the other day if you take a basketball what type of energy does it have at the top of its bounce potential so at the top of its bounce the basketball has stay there pe when it hits the ground what does it have ke the fact that it loses height on each bounce, if you don't bounce it yourself, if you just let it bounce, does that violate the law of conservation of energy? No, in fact, it confirms it. We lose energy to heat and sound, okay? And then the thought puzzle I asked you last semester or last year, can a ball bounce higher than it was originally dropped? The answer you can write here for now is no, and then I'll show you the clever workaround. There's a video, I showed you the video last year, it was from Physics Girl and it showed the same kind of an effect. So I'm gonna skip that. We're gonna go straight to the homework here. So what's your homework? You can circle number three. For those of you that were away uh, for lesson two, I didn't assign any questions from lesson two. I assigned a bunch of questions from the ultimate review, and I'm only going to assign a couple of questions from here. I'm really going to say that you can do a lot of questions from the ultimate review. So uh, four is good. Five is good. Six is good. So four, five, six. Skip, 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 skip. 14 is good. But really, you can do any question from the ultimate review that doesn't 
mention power or efficiency. You can start whittling away at the ultimate review. There's some nasties there too. Let me hit pause for a second. In fact, let me hit stop.